I'm just waiting for it to record. Yes. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Clam Chatter. Oh Eleanor, my you're popping on. You can go away for another second. I'm popping you down just so I can intro it. Because that's what? Ruthie. I see you, Ruthie. Okay, so people are always popping in, and I'm going to step you down while you do that just so I can intro the show. Um, welcome to Clam Chatter. It's our third episode. I'm super excited to be here. Tonight's going to be awesome, and we are on Get Vocal. And what's awesome about Get Vocal is it's live streaming. You can watch us on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. If you come over to Get Vocal, you get to interact with us. And you get to chat on the sidelines. You get to grab a spot. And uh, I'll, I'll kind of cue you to grab a spot because otherwise we're all in here and it's kind of crazy. But I love when you interact. And I want to introduce you to Sue. He is my co-host. So I'm going to bring him up. Sue, grab a spot. He's my loudmouth Boston friend. Clam chatter. Clam chatter. How you doing, Sue? Good. Why am I a, lo am I a loudmouth? I, I, I don't feel like a loudmouth. Uh, all right, I guess I am a loudmouth. You are a loudmouth, but okay. I'm probably a loudmouth too, which is why um, we are a perfect pair. I agree. Why don't we tell everybody how we met before we even introduce our uh, beautiful guest, Melody? Because it's kind of a cool story and it's kind of a sad story. Well, but it is a sad story. It's a sad story. Are you going to tell it or am I? You can tell it. Go for it. Well, I, so I went to school with this great girl, and uh, she was my girlfriend in college's best friend. And, um, and so that best friend, I, I actually kept in touch with the best friend and not my girlfriend who left me a whole other story, possibly, possibly a show. Uh, but anyway, uh, that person died and, um, at the funeral, her, we can say your name, Susan, Susan, Susan died. And, um, and I met you at the funeral, who was one of her best friends, who did not go to UMass, and um, we stuck. I which know. I think it's very cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So she was my best friend, and you guys were supposed to sleep together, but she died. So now you didn't sleep together, and I didn't sleep with her either. But she did sleep with a lot of people, and you were not one of them. And neither I was not. I was so, not. Um, but it's super sad. So this is in honor of our close friend Susan that we are now bonded and we are clams together. It's very uh, cool. It's uh, clam chatter. Hold on, this headphone is talking to me. So today we would like to, oh, it's that? Okay, sorry. Okay, so today's gonna be fun because we're gonna talk about sex. Now we're not always gonna talk about sex on clam chatter, but clams and sex kind of go together. So I am gonna introduce you to Melody Markell, who is our guest tonight. Grab a spot, Melody. I know you're there somewhere. Um, and you are going to tell us lots of fun things about sex and coaching and relationships. Hi, Melody. How are you? Hi. Doing good. Super Welcome. happy to be here. Thank I like you. Glasses. Now you're looking secretary hot. I think I, probably they're blue blockers, and I have a hard time looking at the screen at night not wearing them. So, oh, come on. I think you're just doing it to be sexy. Don't you, Sue? Well, I mean, I'm it's already working. sexy, so... You, yeah, you are. <laughs> so we're going to get a little frisky tonight because we want to talk about some real life experiences um, and, and stuff about being real sexually. But before we get to that, why don't you tell us all what you do? What I do? Yeah. Okay. So I am, I call myself a relational guide. And so Basically, my what I, my belief is that we have a relationship with everything. We have a relationship with ourselves, with other people, with the earth, with the sun and the water and the stars and the plants and all of the things. And the clam. And the, clam. And the clams, absolutely. The clam nation. And <laughs> I think that we were not taught how to do relationship very well. It's there's there's a lot that we were taught as kids and as young adults. And how to be really effective and have really lovely connection was not necessarily one of those things. We actually um, kind of had like our relational operating system installed up until the time we're about 14. And then most people are still operating at the level of a 14 year old kind of using high school dynamics and ways of communicating and there's a better way to do it. And so people work with me and I help them up level their relationship with all things. That is really interesting. So Suka is going to want to talk. I want to know, I don't know if this is possible, because when I read some of your information, 
I noticed that coaching with you might take a year. Yeah. Now, I need to know if you can help Sug in the next like 15 minutes. Can you work with him a little bit on Wait a minute, Sug? wait a minute. Before before we do that, I would <laughs> like to know like so you went to school in uh in Massachusetts and then you moved down the road from you apparently right yeah you went to do math that's pretty cool and uh and so and you went to an all-girls school I went to a women's college I did all girls yeah I'm gonna say everything wrong orgies in the bathroom are not just a rumor all right so uh and I remember going to those parties there but anyway um, you so wish then, you were invited to those parties. <laughs> I know. So actually, my uh, girl from Braintree went there where I grew up in Braintree. Okay. And she, she went there and she used to invite me to those parties. So yes, I have been there. Right. And uh, I went to actually when Julia Child, um, she did the menu. They had a big thing, a Smith. Yeah, every some, year. Some kind of, yeah, yeah. And, Julia uh, Child Day. Yeah. I went. They, I went they to won't, that. That's the one day that we're not allowed to bring any Tupperware to the dining halls. Really? Yeah, because they like they make really amazing, delicious food that's all Julia Child's recipes. And it's, it's like, like shrimp, lobster. It's like it's amazing. Because she went there. She's yeah. like our most yeah. famous alum. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You're the new famous alum, which is awesome. It's great. Right. <laughs> all right. So sorry, sorry. I, 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 I but anyway, so I, but but so we so did you this this whole relate how did you get into it? Like is it your you know, like Yeah, it's a good question. Um so in Boulder, which is where I live now, which is also where Jojo lives, uh we used to have right, Boulder represent. Um, <laughs> we used to have a thing here called the Integral Center. Oh, and then it went away. Okay. Yeah, it's sad. It went away. It closed a couple of years ago. And um, my yeah. brother brought me in, which is also somebody who Jojo knows, who's lived here longer than I have. And the Integral Center, really, the kind of the mission of it was very similar to what I said. It was all about kind of upgrading that relational operating system, how to have more effective connection. Uh, we did a lot of um, kind of relational intelligence, relational awareness, emotional intelligence, kind of anything centered around that, uh, teaching trainings and somewhere like single weekend workshops, somewhere kind of like year long facilitator trainings. And I just kind of walked in one day and then I basically loved it so much I never left. And I worked my way up from student to volunteer to junior staff to senior faculty to director of operations, et cetera. And I actually just quit working with uh, them and like what kind of came after the integral center in November. So this is the first moment that I'm really putting a lot of energy into my own coaching practice, which I've had for probably about five years, but it was always kind of a back burner thing for me. And now it's kind of my main gig. Wow. So it's not just, so it's not just couples. It's not you, just you, couples. You talk about your relationship with your boss, your relationship with anybody. With anybody and anything. Also, okay. our food, that's a relationship we have. The water we drink, that's a relationship. The sunlight, I mean, I think people, put, put, when they think of the word relationship, they tend to put it in a box of me and my intimate partner or me and the yeah. person I'm sleeping with. But that, I don't think that's true. I have a relationship with the cashier when I go and, and they're ringing up my groceries. That's a relationship and it might only last for two minutes, but that to me, I think that that matters or the food that I'm about to eat, that's a relationship. I'm consuming something that's ideally gonna nourish my body and it matters how I'm relating with that, how I'm gonna experience. So it's really a broad term. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna ask a quick question. Do you really teach when you're coaching about kindness with people and how to connect with people in that way so that those two minute relationships are beautiful rather than negative or that kind of thing? Yeah, you know, the word kind is, uh, I, I actually love that word and I don't have it re kind of readily available in my vernacular so much. Um, but I do think that kind of kindness and compassion are really beautiful, necessary foundational pieces for some of the other things that I teach. Oh, nice. Well, do you think you could help Sue? Come on. I want you two to try like a little bit in the world, how Sue relates to the world. He's a pretty happy guy. Um, but is there anything you could do for our audience to show a little bit about what you do, but not with me, with Sue? <laughs> You scared? <laughs> I'm, um, I'm, I'm a little. I'm a little scared. Okay, try it. What is the, what it, 
And when you say that you're scared, what is the fear that comes up? No, no, no. It's just, uh, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, in a fight and anything, you're, you're, if you're not a little scared, you you don't care if you don't have butterflies. Mm. But maybe scared is the wrong word. Butterflies. Butterflies. Yeah, there's like a so it's something unknown. And you don't yeah, know what it I'm, is. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so but that's it's exciting. It's, it's it's exciting. Okay. It's a very bolder thing. So try to go into pretend you're living here. <laughs> We're a lot deeper than you know the Boston people. A little bit. I, anyway. Well, wait a minute. I live in Massachusetts. I'm very <laughs> enlightened. You're very. <laughs> but, you know, we'll get some people on to ask. But I really, I'm going to stop interrupting. Okay, you two go. Okay. I'm so it's like a new thing, and you feel it's kind of like butterflies, like a newness, and there's also an excitement there. It sounds like. Yes. Yeah. And how's this going so far? I'm just kind of like poking around at your emotions a little bit and just seeing what's here. What's that like? It, uh, it what you come off is very provocative, and I'm looking forward to the next question. <laughs> okay, so so far I seem provocative, and you're looking towards what's next. Well, you are. You you you. I mean, you are provocative. I mean, isn't that mm -hmm. that's kind of your thing? I don't see myself as provocative i feel interested in hearing that and yet you are and yet i'm me. using me as that yeah, yeah yeah um what i feel i feel interested there's like a I feel a little on the spot so i'm noticing that's going to slow down a little bit this isn't really me kind of like because it's a, it's just a short amount of time i'll just say a little bit yeah. about what i'm doing i'm not so much looking to see how i can help you with whatever you're kind of working on in the world. I'm more just using kind of present moment awareness questions to kind of get a yeah. better sense of you and like kind of. Okay, sure. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Um, and I noticed that something that I got interested in was so far I've, I've heard Jojo say a couple of different things about you, like you're a loud mouth, or like Bostonian, da da da, and I haven't really experienced you in those ways yet. Like to me, you seem fairly available and calm and open. Uh, I I agree with that. I think mm -hmm. that uh, that actually we actually talked about this loudmouth thing, and I edited that to uh, yeah. something else. And uh, because, but but although I would say that. There are there are situations where I'll just do that. I'll just become that mm. because to to shut down all the noise. To shut down all to the noise. To be intimidating. Mm. To be intimidating. Sometimes you'll put on kind of like a loudmouth persona. Yes. But otherwise, you're not really like that. Like you don't quite seem like that to me. I I don't know. I I I don't. I don't think I am, but but she's but I, bet, but I think there's a lot of people that that, that would say that that would say that. But yeah. and, and and if it is, that's my intention. Uh huh. Like you've got a lot of choice around it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, something so far I'm appreciating about you is that it sounds like you. First of all, it sounds like um, kind of like emotions move fairly quickly for you, and you've got kind of a good understanding of them for yourself, like started scared, turned into butterflies, turned into excitement, all within about 45 seconds or so. Yes. And yeah, like I love that. And it also sounds like you have some capacity to kind of adopt certain qualities when you think they might serve you like kind of this loud mouth persona. Yes. Fit. Yeah, I also think that, that that's really cool. You're not kind of at the whim of what's happening. You're actually, it sounds like you can kind of be present and do never what you need to do. Never, never want to be what? at the whim. Never want to be at the whim. Of at the whim. Anything. Never want to be at the. Always kind of want to be in control. No, no. Well, well even if control means sitting back and being quiet. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So you don't want to be at the whim. You want to either be in control or be back sitting quiet. Like it's just. It sounds like you don't. You're not somebody who. What is it? It's like. 
can I help you? The, the, you can help me. Yeah. So like, so right now I think what we, what, what might be difficult, I don't know this, but that I haven't stated anything that, uh, that like I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And if I were to come to you, I would say, you know, I'm working on my relationship with, and I would say, you know, much to the chagrin of Jojo, maybe others, it's not sexually or anything like that, but it's maybe with, um, with my, with people in my career, sure. you know, not the ability to not be political, mm -hmm. which is very important. Mm. And now, like, I have to interrupt. I think that you're very easy to like fall in love with because your voice, not only are you beautiful, but you are mesmerizing all of us oh, with your you. voice. It's slightly provocative, slightly sexy. <laughs> um, but I'm going to forget to talk because I'm falling into some sort of daze here. Listen, I don't think you've ever seen me this calm, have you, Jojo? No, this is insane. Like she has a spell on you. <laughs> this is, this is, is truly. I think that um, people, someone, Stephen is saying he's enchanted. Um, I think you're in a trance, according to Steph. I so, agree. I think she's in a trance. And, um, you know, wait till we start talking about the article that mm. you wrote for Medium, which we can get to next, which is going, it's all about speaking your truth about sex and what you want. So why don't we right. give you the floor for that? You wrote an amazing and article. And just real quick, before we oh, go yeah. there, just to kind of close up what just oh, happened. Yeah, sure. Sorry, you gotta I think I just want to, I think I just want to say like, 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 yes, because the last thing you said was you didn't come to me saying, like, this is what I'm working on. And I and I, I want to respond to that is by saying, yes, we haven't done that yet. And, you know, we just spent probably about three or four minutes together, which is very different than having, you know, an hour coaching session every week. Plus, I'm kind of on call all the time. Um, but that's where I would start, where at first is like, I got to get a sense of you because you're going to do things very differently than I'm going to do things, than Jojo's going to do things, than Steven is going to do things, Liz is going to do things. Like, like every person, we're all fundamentally the same as humans, right? We've got these bodies and we've got these hearts and these feet and whatever, but we're also fundamentally different. That's something that's really unique about us as a, as a species, I think. And so it's important before I start actually working with somebody and like, giving like coaching or advice or whatever, I gotta know like, how how is it gonna be most effective? What are they like such that when I say something, I know how to say it, that they'll really be able to hear it and implement it. So that's where I'm starting. And then we would get more into this thing of like, okay, so you've got something going on at work. And I would actually give you more like strategies and whatnot around that. So I can already tell you that, so you know, anybody who's ever had a therapist, um, you kind of, if you, if you're, if they retire or you cause them to retire or whatever, my experience, um, I can already tell you that I would rather talk to you than a licensed psychotherapist hmm. about anything. Just, just in this, because I think, you know, pretty quickly, I think, you know, you know, within a session or something like that. So Melody, I would say that I kind of wish you lived in Boston. <laughs> oh, so thank you. And look how we're doing this all like on the computer, and you're you're in a trance. Everyone thinks they could make you do something now because you're in a trance. <laughs> it's true, though. I feel that way. Oh, I feel really <laughs> touched hearing that. By the way, all of my clients, all of them, I think right now all of my clients are virtual. I don't actually have anybody who lives in Boulder, so mm -hmm. I do, do this all online. Women by chance, or more women than men? Um, it's gone back and forth over the years. Right now, I've got more women. Historically, I've had more men. Yeah, I think you have some power, Melody. And Thank let you. I'm not trying to get you away from coaching and trancing out Sue here. Yeah, yeah. I just but, to close up. And see, you want me to talk to you? Uh, we're answering questions on the side. If anyone is watching on Facebook or YouTube, come over to get vocal because we are engaging over here with Melody and Sue, and you can talk on the sides. Eventually, we're going to have people grab spots. Before we do that, well, you know, I mean, I could have people come in and ask questions, but I really want to get to the part um, about your article because I think this will be like a big picture of Melody for us. Um, so, Medium, you have written an article. Why don't you tell us exactly what the article is, and then we will go from there. Yeah, so um, I wrote an article. I write articles every week. This one is one that has... Uh, gotten more attention. It's, 
I don't think he wanted me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, that this is an older article that I wrote for a different online magazine that uh, went under a couple of years ago. But then people started messaging me about it, like, hey, where was that article you wrote years ago? And I was like, oh, shit, I, it's not up anymore. And so I put it back up well, on my medium. Same way, right? it's the same I do feel the same way. I do feel the same way. And that's, you know, that's why I was comfortable putting it back up. But um, it's definitely the one that I think has gotten the most attention from you know, I, I've gotten the most attention around. So it's called um, why talking, it's called how to talk sexy, why talking about sex makes for better sex. And it comes from this idea that uh, I think there's a lot of, well, let me back up a second. Something that I think is important to name actually is that since writing that article originally, the Me Too movement happened. Right. So th there are things that I'm going to say that might seem a little, I don't know, provocative or something, just kind of given what's a more current uh, cultural climate around this kind of stuff than maybe what was a few years ago. Um, but I personally still feel the same way. And I am happy to kind of answer any questions about how what I'm saying intersects with sexual safety and things like that. Okay. Um, so it comes from this idea that when I am with a an intimate partner, or even if I'm like meeting somebody out, uh, or I don't know, just if I'm if I'm with usually a man, uh, and I can feel that he wants something from me, but he's but he's like too scared to say it. Usually that he wants to have sex with me, but he's too scared to say it, or even that he's attracted to me but too scared, or doesn't want to like have me like write a Me Too article about him later on or whatever, um, and and it kind of. Like I can feel that as a woman, I know that there's something going on. And sometimes that's hot, right? Like sometimes it's nice to just kind of be in the dance and not really naming things so explicitly, that can be great. But other times it actually is confusing to me because I might not know what's going on and it might seem like he's hiding something. And then my, like, I kind of get a little bit on guard. Melody, we would never have any confusion between us, ever. <laughs> Excellent. Ever. Amazing. <laughs> Oh God! This is one of those hot and hot shows. You guys feeling that on the sidelines? <laughs> I'm feeling even married two hundred and seventy years. Good <laughs> Lord! Well, I'm sorry, it's true. So, 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 so it's this idea of like I actually really like it when a man is is present with his desire and with me and is calibrated. I don't want to hear this all the time, but but if it's like we're in some sort of you know, we, we use the word trance. If we're in some kind of a trance together or if we're vibing or if we're, maybe we're like, I'm already, it's already my partner and we're like starting to take clothes off. If he looks at me and says, I want to have sex with you or I want to fuck you, it can actually be incredibly hot and really like lets me be in touch with what's true for him or her in the present moment and to have me kind of relate with it. And it's not actually any different than anything else that I teach as far as being present and speaking to the honesty of the moment. Um, it, but, but people like it more because sex, everyone likes talking about sex. And so. Yes, they do. They but really do. Guys have to be a little worried about this. I mean, they could really rub you, rub you the wrong way. They could, they could. And that's why I say like, calibration is important. I definitely don't recommend just walking up to a random woman at a bar and saying, hey, I want to have sex with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, although it has it. happened sometimes where I, I, I have just met somebody at a bar or, or a club or whatever. And, you know, maybe it's not I want to have sex with you, but it's, hey, I'm attracted to you. Yeah, that's hey, I guess yeah. that. Mm -hmm. That other level. Sue, why don't you weigh in? Have you ever walked up to someone at a bar, I'm sure you've said I'm attracted to you, but I'm not sure you've said I want. But here's, but here, wait, I, I want to say one that. thing. I always. I want to say one thing really quick. Okay. What's really important about this, and I probably say this somewhere in the article, what's really fucking important about this is it has to be done without any attachment. Okay. Not as a way of you know getting in my pants or like actually having like no expectation, no attachment, just present with I have this desire and my desire is you. And that's ah, it. Ah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, so you don't. So, so because I was going to say you have to earn that. I, I, I think that anything that 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 you would say that that's, I don't know. That's, you know, like, again, you said that this was before the Me Too thing, after the Me Too thing, that um, 
as a as a you got to earn that as a guy. But I've I felt that before. But I was raised by hippie parents, so um, you, you were? Know, yeah. <laughs> we're what? all learning things about Sug today. <laughs> yeah. I, I had no idea. So this isn't that foreign to you. I thought you'd be like. So I don't know. On the Are floor, you know, kidding? Yeah, you to sit up. My mom would kill me if I ever. That that just and I'm not a mama's boy at all. But there's no way you. We I just didn't learn it that way. It seemed normal to me to be respectful in that manner. Right. So. That makes, so Melody, um, I think what I mean. I understand exactly what you're saying. Do you walk up to men? most more often men, but also women, but, and say, I'm feeling this vibe. Um, I, I'm attracted to you. Um, I'm feeling that we should hook up. Like, do you make that move? Do I do that? Yeah. I will. Um, let's see. I'm never a great example of, of my own things. Cause I don't really go out to like bars and clubs and whatnot anymore. I actually, and I just wrote another article about this that I'm going to publish soon. I actually, what I think is a great way of meeting people is just going about my daily life or your daily life. And then like, if I go to a certain meetup group or I go to the climbing gym or something and I meet somebody there, it's like an activity that I'm already doing. And I want to have things in common with the people right. who I date anyway. Um, but I will. Hey, Jelly. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there? No, yeah, we're all here. So just I say lost you, but I can that is so funny. Jillian, can you hear? If you can hear me, I'm stepping you down, but I want you to come in in a minute and talk to us, okay? That, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, I'm stepping you down. I like I, I will definitely say to what something I've done is I'll, I'll have my phone number written out on a piece of paper and I will hand it to a guy and I will look him in the eye and I will say, This is for you. Wow. And then I'll walk away. You have to use that voice. You have to keep saying, this is for you. This is for you. But, but it's like so many times I, I did it when I was younger and I would, I would have the courage to like give my number, but I wouldn't have the courage to be present with him was the thing. So I kind of, this is for you and like shuffle off. And I think a lot of, because there's a lot of sensation that can happen when we're working with these things of attraction and desire, we can get flooded with sensation and it's hard to know how to be with that, if we, especially if we're not practiced at it. So it really, it was a few years ago, I really made it a point. If if I'm going to do that, I'm actually going to be present with the guy as I do it. And so I would hand it to him, look him in the eye, say, this is for you. And I would pause so I could actually feel him. And then I would walk away. Okay. Is that a dream come true, Sue? That is, uh, yeah, now, <laughs> you know, virtual slip of paper that would do no, but, 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 uh, but, um, I think that I can see how, like, guys, I think that it's not so bad the way you respond, like, the way you did it the first time, because it could be taken the wrong way. I what mean, do you mean, what do you mean the way I did it the first time? You don't know anything about the person, right? And they could be, um, I don't know, I feel like that's dangerous. Am I wrong about that? It could be which, dangerous. Which which one? Do you I don't not, know which do you one not, talking do, about. Do you not? So so. All right. Do you allow for? Do you allow for, um, for different tactics for a man and for a woman? If I'm giving my number. Just just or in this in this in this practice. Do you feel like there's different risks for men and for women? Um. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what I, I think that's but, what I, but, but the, but the, the I mean, I know here, that. And I think, I think the thing that like doesn't quite get talked about as much because this isn't as like sexy or hot, but really the, all of these ideas are built on top of a foundation and that foundation is presence, right? Like if I'm not present with what's actually happening, if I'm not present with my desire, if I'm not present with that, I want this person or I want to get in bed with her or whatever, if I'm just kind of in my like fantasy land or in the like, not present with me, but paying attention to her or something, then, then none of this works. Like it all collapses because then I can feel the like, 
it's it's like grimy almost. And I think that's worth saying. Like I would ne- I actually wouldn't necessarily recommend going and doing this with strangers unless you already have some sort of like a meditation practice or you're already working with a coach or a therapist, I would say do it with your partner. Like I think, and that's kind of where the title comes from, how to talk sexy. It's like, I think even with our intimate partners who we've been with for maybe a long time, there's still such stigma often around talking around sex that, that like, I, I don't necessarily know like what my partner likes or doesn't like, or, or they haven't asked me what I like or don't like. And just the, like being able to, um, like I actually really love it when I'm already have a sexual relationship with somebody and we're making out and we might have sex, but we might not, but we're, right now we're just making out, we're being present, right? There's no goal. There's nowhere to get. And he looks at me and he says, I want to fuck you. I'm like, well, in that case here, let me take my bra for it. Like, it's really amazing to yeah. have that level of presence and honesty with somebody who I already am feeling close with. And it's, and it is, it's a total turn on for me. And I, and I think, I think that like, Something I've noticed is just there's still, we've come a long way and there's still so much stigma. There's still like men who don't know where the clit is or like women who don't want to ask like, hey, do you like how what I'm doing in this blowjob? Do you like when I lick your penis? That, or like whatever it is, like we just, we don't actually talk about it and we could be having so much better sex if we would just talk about these things. I agree with that. And, and so, so like that was like a big, huge revelation for me um, when uh, the difference between being early 20s, even mid 20s, whatever, mm-hmm. to now mm-hmm. is the appreciation of the coaching. Yeah. You know? Totally. Can I, I, it, it should be taught in college, it should be taught in high school. <laughs> you know? School. Ask yeah, for I know. It. our whole because, curriculum because is so messed then, up. It's, 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 uh, Ian wants it, diagrams, Sue. Stan wants diagrams. Stan needs diagrams. Okay? <laughs> Stan needs them. David has flip charts. <laughs> yeah, David, David's my husband, so he needs flip charts. Oh, I love your husband. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. Stan. He, he needs all of them. He's my favorite. Um, wait, you, hey, Jillian, do you want to pop in and, and ask a question or just be part of the crazy here? Because you are welcome. Or anyone who wants to possibly grab a spot and ask Melody a question. I think she's mesmerized a lot of us. Poor Sam out there has the flu, but she's still on here. No, um, well, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I do like, do I, oh, do you remember what you're about to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You promise? Okay, because I want to say one quick disclaimer, which is that um, I am not any sort of a therapist. I'm definitely not a sex therapist and I'm definitely not, like I have, I, I have friends of mine who um, actually work with people around their sexuality and sexual shame and there's, there, I mean, it's kind of, it's a thing, right? Like we live in Boulder, so it's a thing that happens. And I'm not one of those people necessarily, but, or I mean, I'm not, but what I do know is that I'm a woman and I am a coach and I'm a guide. And this is something that I have a lot of experience in dealing with as a woman and as a guide. And so I can kind of do that, but I don't want anybody to make the mistake of um, believing that I'm anything more than I'm not, you know? Cause I don't think that's fair to those professions whatever you're gifted. We're all in it, you know, Woo! I would say you're not, you might not be defined as a sex therapist, but whatever you're saying right now is guiding us. And again, Sue, before you uh, start um, with your question again, Jillian, I don't know where you went. You said shit and you disappeared. Um, so if you want to come in now and grab a spot or if anyone, oh, there she is. She's known as kitten. Hi. Jillian, can you see us? Nope. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> all right. So you're on here. You're here with Melody. You're here with Sue. I don't know if you've been listening to this kind of I sexual have, I have. stuff. But I know you can weigh into some of this because you are out there in the bars and stuff and exploring. So what do you think? Well, I think my pictures put out a lot more than what I really am. Okay. Um, Melody, I, you know, I'm listening to you. And, you know, my mindset, I think, is is childish like i i'm afraid of the things you're talking about like mm. i i'm very overtly sexual i'm out there I, you know but like if i ever i could never approach nor if somebody approached me in a bar and said hey i want to fuck you i would be like oh my god i can't but in my i think my heart or something i'm like yeah i want it but <laughs> i could never 
never let myself, like I am stuck in that old way of thinking that I'm not a good girl if I do this, or mm. they're not good people, mm-hmm. or will they use me, or I will not, and you know what, maybe, maybe I'll just have a good time, it's great, but I'm so stuck on maybe the love factor of like truly finding somebody that I'm so, I don't, I don't have anybody, you yeah. know, yeah. and, and I, I'm stuck. Yeah. Well, first I want to say, I hear you saying that you are like this, these ideas kind of scare you, but that there's something about them that you're drawn to. Mm -hmm. And I also, when you, yeah, totally. And I also, I just felt my heart a lot when you just said, um, you know, I really want this thing and and actually I have nobody. Yeah. 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 And I think that's, I think that's not an uncommon thing. I think that we're, we're sold this lie of like, A, that sex is bad. I mean, we're, we're our country is founded on, for Puritans founded, a, I mean, like the amount of sexual shame that happens these days is just, it, I just find it absolutely ridiculous. And it makes sense to me and I, and I get it and I have moments of that. I had a moment of it uh, this morning with somebody and like, so I get it, but I just think it's, it's such a, it's such a, it's like, a, it's such a tragedy. It's one of our biggest tragedies, I think. Um, and we're also, you know, taught this thing of like, we're going to get hurt or we need to wait for the one or whatever it is. And um, we're not, we don't get to learn how to just be in our bodies and how to just be in our bodies with somebody else. There's so much attached to it. That's what we've grown up with. And it's hard to unlearn things. I actually think one of our biggest um, like missions or not mission, like journeys that we can take is to just unlearn all the bullshit that we've been taught because so much of it is bullshit not all of it but i really think that we come into this world uh there's a great quote it's um we come into this world fine and then we get defined and we spend the rest of our life getting refined and this idea like we come in and we're just like these beautiful children with so much curiosity and love and and it's not like there's no separateness like like there's no racism like we're just kids and it's amazing and we've got our gifts and we're like ready to be in the world maybe not all kids some are really shy or whatever but like for the most part like we've got these amazing little beings and then we're like school and like parenting and like all of these things that just get put upon us. And it's not like anybody's trying to be malicious usually, but it's just a lot of ideas that don't actually end up serving us. And so that's the define, we get defined. And then the refined, I love that last one because it's a, it's a, it's kind of a play on words. It's like, we're refining what works for us, but we're also re getting refined. Like we're going back to being fine after we've been kind of defined by so much of society and culture. I don't know if that answered any question you asked or didn't ask, but that's kind of just came up for me. Thank you. I think I think you're really brave, Jillian, and um, I thought it was me. And I'm really happy that you popped it. No, that wasn't directed to you. There was something else. But um, no, I'm I'm really proud. You're beautiful on the inside and the outside, and I know that you know you're gonna find what you're looking for, but I think the approach that Melody has is very different than anything you ever imagined or thought of, and I think you should take that in, you know, and maybe, I'm not saying walk into a bar and ask some guy to, you know, fuck you right there, but I'm saying that I think what she's saying is kind of interesting. I know that Sug is, Sug, are you there? He's on mute. Uh-oh. Hold on. I know that he's on mute. Oh, that's weird. Um, am I on you? You were, but now you're not. Okay. So, so, you know, I, I, uh, I proclaim that I am a girl dad. I have, you know, two daughters, um, close, you know, early twenties. And, uh, you know, the, the whole idea of like how, what, what Jillian was saying was, you know, am I a slut? Like she didn't say that, but, but, but it's like, she battles those, those things. And, and it, it, it comes from where you grew up. It comes from your house. You know, did you, did you have to deal with that at all? And I know I didn't, and I didn't, uh, you know, even though we were all boys, we, it wasn't like, uh, you know, anybody was uh, demonized or, 
you know, called a slut because they had multiple partners early or whatever, you know, like, like, and, and by the way, that just seems to go away when you're our age now. But um, did you have to deal with that? And how do you deal with that? Or patients that, not patients or your clients that, that, that ask you about that? Oh, that's a question for me? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, about, um, about, yeah. Well, I, I mean, the thing, the, like, the main thing that comes up for me in hearing that is just like, I want to let everybody know that it's okay to be a sexual being. That's okay. I agree 100%. I think a lot of people don't know that. Or no they know matter it, but it hasn't like, gotten all the way in yet. Like, it, that's okay. Like, we are. It's one of life's greatest pleasures. And be safe, of course, but like, it's okay. It's good. Yeah, I think people worry a lot that they're going to be judged if they speak. like. I am actually trying to get people to feel comfortable. I'm a little loud and a little funny about it, but yeah. my goal is to make it a little more comfortable. That's why I called the show "Clam Chatter" because mm -hmm. I'm trying to get people to laugh about it, but to actually open up and be more comfortable about it. And um, mm -hmm. but yes, so we, we put our mouth we we put our money where our mouth is. Though I think with yeah. our daughters. Mm -hmm. yes. Don't yes. we, Jojo? Yes, we I'm do. So full yes. of us it's right now. <laughs> it's a little bit scary, right? It's scary to raise daughters, especially when you're when I'm you not hear that word. I'm not. You're not I because because it's just because I always had an open conversation with them. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, I uh, you know I just I I don't I don't demonize it. I don't think it's a bad thing. Sex. And so I, I'm not worried. That's good. I think that's good. We're good dad to girls who are now women, which is cool. So if people have, um, yeah, Laves is away this week, Liz and Steph. Laves isn't asking questions. But um, Jillian, do you have any more questions for Melody? You're welcome to hang out. We're going to get into a few more things. Or um, I don't know if you wanted to just go to the sidelines. You tell me. If anyone wants to join into our show, just write on the side and let us know. What are you thinking, Jillian? Are you feeling satisfied? Um, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So should I um, – I'll let you um, – I'm going to drop you out just in case anyone okay. else wants to pop in. But we That's so fine. appreciate you being here. And um, if you want to come back in, you you're brave and we love you. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Melody, I have a question for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So oh, there's um, How do we like what it, it, it is uh is it okay if the frequency of intimacy goes away as a relationship matures? Uh it's I think what you're asking, like, is it okay if as a relationship matures or has more time under its belt that there's maybe less turn on over time? Less. Mm -hmm. Yes, that. Yes. Yeah. That, every, and everything yeah. that, that, that goes with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing, I, yeah, I think it's okay. I think, I think a couple of things. I think one is that something important to know is that uh, there's a lot of science involved here. There's like, chemicals in the brain that are doing a thing. And when we are intimate with somebody, um, this isn't actually what you asked, but I think it's a really great kind of thing to know because this has helped me out a lot. When we're intimate with somebody, if we have sex with somebody, it's going to take about two weeks of not being intimate with them for our brain chemicals to kind of come down. I actually don't know if it's different for men, but I know that's true for women. It takes about two weeks. So like when I, ha when I just went through a really gnarly breakup in October and it was like, it was basically right on the two week mark where for, I wanted to die, I wanted to die, I wanted to die. Oh, now the sun is coming out. So oh. there are, yeah, so I there are, that. Yes. yes, yeah, we, we text a little then. So that's happening. And, and you know, like the honeymoon phase is a real thing. That's also chemicals in the brain that lasts about nine months. Um, there's, there are actually, there's like, I, I, I love not discounting signs that goes into these sort of things. So yes, there is going to be a natural kind of drop off. Um, and I, I think that's part of why I think it's really important not to 
do, make any like rash decisions before kind of the nine month marker in a relationship. Like deciding to get married at six months in is not a gr necessarily a great idea because we're kind of flooded with passion and with love for this person. And we don't necessarily know how it's going to shake out. Um, and beyond that, I think, but I, I do also think that it's, it's not necessarily true that eventually, like if we're together long enough, it's just going to be a sexless marriage or something. I don't necessarily think that needs to be the case. I think that is a moment where it can be good to talk to a therapist or a sex therapist or a coach or a somebody to see kind of what's going on. That might be, there's, you know, sex is so tied to emotions and um, it could be that it's really just that for six months, he hasn't taken the trash out when he said that he was going to. And because he didn't do something he said he was going to do, now I can't trust him. And now I'm not turned on. Like it could also be something like that. I was There's a lot tired. of factors that go into it. <laughs> hey, um, Eleanor is on here. Hi, Eleanor. You're on mute, Eleanor. All right, hold on. We're going to unmute her because I have power. Okay, can you hear us? I love the power. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi. This okay, so Eleanor, do you have a question for Melody or do you want to tell us something about your sex life? No, <laughs> not this second. <laughs> no, I did like what you were talking oh, about. Oh, wait. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. It's a little light, but try. Can you hear me now? I think. Yeah. Okay. No, I liked what you were talking about wanting to, you know, go, with, go through a period of time, you know, with the person to feel more comfortable with them. I was just talking to my husband. We were saying, like, to have a full calendar year mm -hmm. to see everybody in those different stages. Yeah. Anyway, it's, this has yeah. been touching. So I wanted to jump on and say hi. They're cute. Okay. Eleanor and her husband are cute. David, come in there. Come in there and say hi. Okay. Hi. Hi. And hi, hi cute. Uh, the rest it of the world like being sickening. <laughs> no, they are they're a good example uh, you know, I don't know that David or Eleanor walked up to each other and said that they want to have sex with each other at a bar but they may have been set up correct were you guys set up yeah but um they are very much even though they've been together more than like six months to a year they're still like honeymoon phase people they have a very right. good chemistry you can see it Oh yeah, hundred percent. Set up by our mutual hairdresser. The hairdresser. Yeah, <laughs> David, do you have a question? No. Or are you just going along with Eleanor? All right. No, I just wanted to um, have fun. I'm glad you're here. Yay. This has been like you know really different. Like I was so excited to have <laughs> Melody on for so many reasons. What I have found, it's just it's been like a super mellow but powerful, amazing, like we're getting to so many parts here, mm -hmm. but even Jojo and Sug have like gone down like into a less hyper level. And well, I think- didn't we think, didn't we, What? Joe, didn't we think that it would be more sexual? Yeah, but it's so meaningful, you know? It's been really great. I mean, it's kind of gotten you fired up too. Like it got us fired up, but in a very sensual way. Yeah. Mm -hmm to Melody. I think there's a lot of couples, not only Eleanor and David, who are going to leave and go have sex after <laughs> listening to this show, which may happen. We were going to do something, um, we were going to do something fun. Um, we just wanted to do something called, a new thing I wanted to call like clam digger, just part of the show, which I was going to have Melody po possibly tell us two truths and one lie and see if we could figure out if you know what the truths and the lies are, um, if people you know have some more questions and want to keep asking, we can go there. Um, you know, time is actually going fast because we've all been like pretty mesmerized. But do you have any like truths and lies you want to throw in for my clam digging? I could. Uh, yeah, I told you before the show. I'm so bad at thinking of lies. I'm just really good at thinking about truths. Um, <laughs> I'm so good at lies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, you tell the lie and she'll tell the no, truth and we'll try to figure it out. If All it's right. easier for you, you can do it. But I can do it. Okay. You're saying me? Me do it? I do it now? I dare you. I'm not good at it either, but Sue could try. Let's see. Okay. So. I might forget because I'm um, One is that uh, I. I take notes. Since we're talking about sex, I'll do, I'll do a sexy one sort of sexy one. Um, 
one time my brother walked in on me having a threesome. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I grew up in Italy. Okay. And the third one is um, I've never eaten lobster. Oh, Jesus. Okay, people, what? Those of you who are watching. <laughs> <laughs> what are we thinking, Sug, or Eleanor, or David? This All is right. A so, time. so the brother, I'm which is, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for that to not be true. For the which one? Which one? Brother, for the sake of the brother, I'm rooting for that one to not be true. However, I, I have not. I'm not saying that that's not true. The other one was she grew up in Italy. Kind of short when you're looking at. Uh, and then the other one was what? Rebecca Italy's a lie. Okay, I'm gonna say that uh, Italy is not true. I was gonna say the same. I think Italy's true. But you know her. No, I actually don't know this stuff. We don't actually know I each know. other that well. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. We've met like twice. <laughs> Wait a minute. So so over. So my brother you walked in out. on you having a threesome. I elaborate. Was that? If Never that's true, out what the lie was. she didn't oh. say. Wait, that was a little tough. Steven doesn't think, think I have a brother. True? Too many questions. What am I? Tell, somebody tell me what I'm supposed to say now. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. We're all talking amongst ourselves. Was it Italy? Oh. Okay, she's asking. Yeah, sorry. So Go. should I reveal it? And so you is everybody ask. ready? Reveal. Italy is the lie. I grew up in France. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. So now let's talk about the brother. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why no lobster? Jewish. Oh, okay, yeah. I've eaten shellfish like less than 10 times in my life and I've never had lobster. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. So go back to the brother one. Live, <laughs> were you living with your brother? No, it was at a party. Woo! And and uh can I ask the uh Composition really of the three is. participants. <laughs> the composition? Yeah. Gender composition. Oh, it was me and two guys. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Not if you're the brother. Her brother wasn't one of them. Wait, yeah, what? he wasn't one of them. He just walked in. Wow. Right. Oh. He had the worst part of the whole of everybody involved in that situation. Canada. Yeah. I mean, yeah, listen, I'm not true. listen. I'm 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 aware. I'm enlightened. You, it, it's a brother. You don't want to see that. Oh Wait, what's the thing? Yeah, what, oh no, I'm saying, saying it's the same guy. Worse than in on your parents. I want to tell this something, which is that I, for for a long time, I had an active making out relationship with two brothers. What? Yeah, it was a whole thing. I love you. <laughs> I do too. My God. Okay, it's who loves you too. This is so oh, cool. Eleanor and David just went to have sex. Bye guys, enjoy. <laughs> um, okay, so that's pretty awesome. Liz said she kissed somebody at a party that was like, I I don't know, it just went away. I kissed the same guy as my sister in one night at a party. You guys, I don't have oh. these kind of stories. Sue, why don't you just tell what what you've done before we end? We have a few more minutes. It's not it's not uh it's too much. Okay, Melody, did you and your brother talk about it? No. So he walked in, he walked out. Yes. Is he older or younger? He's older. Okay. Um, so it was never brought up till tonight. No, it's this is the reason that I had it on my mind is that sometimes I'll be at a party. Actually, not this only really happened once, but recently I was at a not like a party, but like a little gathering. It was like I don't know, like ten or twelve people, and I walked in and they said, "Oh, you missed it. We just went around sharing our most embarrassing story," and I was like, "Oh, that, okay, that I missed way. it. Great." And then they were like, "What's your most embarrassing story?" And I was like, "I don't get embarrassed very easily. I don't know." And what was funny was that I, I realized that actually it's that, it's that story. And, but it took me three stories to get there. I was like, well, this was kind of embarrassing. And I would start telling the story and be like, wait, wait, no, this one's more embarrassing. And then like halfway through the second one, I'd be like, oh, I got it. And then I told the story about my brother and the threesome. And now I, it was something about telling it that night, it kind of transmuted the embarrassment of it. And right. I still won't talk about it with him. And I, 
hope that he doesn't even remember that this happened, but he probably does. Um, but I no longer feel embarrassed about it. And now I'll just like volunteer this story. Like, hey guys, you want to hear about the time that this thing happened? That really sucked. <laughs> like a really good ending so you, to so our what, show. The, the, I mean, the amazing thing is, is that she, she was, Melody was involved. She looked up and saw a family member's face. <laughs> That's horrifying. Yeah, well, that yeah, that was kind of the end of that sexual not, encounter. Oh, it was the end. <laughs> yeah, because it took me out of the mood. Right. Did you tell the guys? <laughs> like, that's my brother who just saw yeah. body parts. And yeah. Clam. I was like, that was. I was like, oh shit, that was my brother. And then a minute later, I was like, I got it. Sorry, guys. Like, we're done here. <laughs> God. <laughs> so, um, Melody, you have been awesome. Do you want to let the audience know how they can find you um, if they want to be, you know, sure. any of this or coached or anything? Totally. Yeah. So, um, a great way to contact me is uh, on my Facebook page. My Facebook is totally public, I never post anything privately on there. I like my life being an open, vulnerable book. So, um, if you're interested, message me on there, maybe friend me first, because sometimes the messages go to another folder. Um, you can also go to, I've got, uh, my medium page that has articles. If you comment on there, um, you can also email me. It's my name, Melody Markell at gmail.com. Yeah. You guys uh, message here and we'll get it to you if you are missing this for any reason. Yeah. I think it, I think it says most of that on my website too, which is Melody .com in the contact me section. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have been amazing. Sue, do you have any last questions before we scoot? Because up next, we have Not Your Therapist, um, and it's going to be an awesome show. So stay on Get Vocal so we can continue our love connection. That's our whole thing we're doing on Wednesday nights, and that everyone should continue because it's awesome. Um, Sue, any last licks? I mean, questions? Best guest. Uh, just just outstanding. Just, Aww, just, just everything. Was, okay. I'm not, uh, okay. I think he's it's mesmerized. Better. Thank you so much. Wow, I feel really touched hearing that. Yeah. It's been really fun. I've I've loved this. I'll come back on if you ever want me back yeah, on. Yeah, we it's want great. you to come back on. Great. It's been a great hour. It, it's been awesome. I think everybody participated. And we will be back next week, next Wednesday night at 7. We will also bring Melody back another time. And if you want to reach Melody, you can message me or hopefully you took notes. And uh, thank you both so much. And thank you, Jillian and Eleanor and David and everyone who participated. Totally. Um, I'm Chad. I'll see you guys next week. Stay here for Not Your Therapist. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Yeah.